David Durham here once again in the French speaking part of Switzerland. As you may or may not know, Switzerland is a confederation and that is a grouping of 26 what we call cantons and I'll show you just a map here on the screen. I am, as I say, in the French speaking part which is along the western edge and is surrounded by France on three sides. By far, most of the Swiss-speaking people are German-speaking, but uh, and they occupy the center, the north, the east, and this part of the south. Uh, but the language they speak varies from one, not just from one canton to another, but you can even have different dialects from one valley to the next, because these are ancient dialects that have been spoken for centuries. And in the south here, we have the Italian-speaking uh, canton which is called Ticino in Italian. There is also a fourth language that is spoken uh, but only by a very very few people. It's all but defunct and it's called Romance. And there are just a few people left in this canton right here uh, where that language is spoken. Now speaking of these three languages, uh, when you buy a product, any kind of product here in Switzerland, the label is going to be in at least the three main languages, German, French, and Italian. Let's take this jar of jam, for example. You see here we have German, confiture, French, confiture, and Italian, confettura. Over here, himbeeren, framboise, lamponi. In English, raspberry. Now, even on the money, you will see not only those three languages, but also the fourth language, Romance. Right here, you have the German, Schweizerische Nationalbank. Here, you have Romance, which is the one that's almost dead, Banca Nationale Svizra. And then, uh, that says 20 Franken, 20 francs, 20 franc in um, Romance. And then on the other side, you have French, Banque Nationale Suisse, and Italian, Banca Nationale Svizra. And so this is just part of everyday French life. And you might wonder, well, how do these people get along? Well, there are multiple answers to that question. One is uh, that they just find a way to make it work. Another is that some people just keep to themselves and don't bother with the other parts of the country or bother to, find, uh, to learn the other languages. I would say, generally speaking, there are more German speakers who have learned to speak French than vice versa. Uh, the French have inherited the French, as in the nation of France, sort of resistance to the German language, which goes way back before our generation. But it's a fascinating place to live and to visit. Uh, the French and the German section has this invisible barrier, which is called the Rüstigrabe in, in Swiss German. Rüsti is sort of a Swiss dish that's sort of like hash browns, and uh, that's sort of their equivalent of the Iron Curtain. But gradually, uh, that Rüstigrabe, that uh, barrier, is being overcome, and more and more people are intermarrying between the different linguistic groups, and it's just uh, one more fascinating place to discover and explore.